This video is sponsored by Card Kingdom. You can visit their store by using my referral link in the description below. Hi everyone, I'm Need Sahone, and today is Monday, and that means it's time for another MTG Top 10, the series where I rank cards based on their historical performance at Magic's highest level of competition, and today we're looking at Curses. Curses originally made their debut in the original Innistrad, and they have reappeared on our return visits to the plane, as well as showing up in a few other sets, like Amonkhet. A curse is a type of aura that enchants a player, usually giving that player some sort of negative effect. In all, there are 42 curses in Magic, and in this video we'll look at the 10 that have left the biggest impact on competitive Magic. Before we get started, here's a quick reminder on how I score cards in these videos. A first tier top 8 is worth 2 points, this includes events like Pro Tours, and a second tier top 8 is worth 1 point, this includes events like Regional Championships. Alright, let's get to the list. At number 10, it is Fraying Sanity. This 3-mana curse forces the enchanted player to mill X cards every instep, where X is the number of cards put into their graveyard from anywhere this turn. In other words, it really augments mill effects in addition to causing a whole bunch of other incidental mill. Unsurprisingly, Fraying Sanity has gained all of its points in modern mill decks, where it can really accelerate just how quickly your opponent runs out of cards. It hasn't gained any points, though, since 2020. At number 9, it is Curse of Fool's Wisdom. This 6-mana curse punishes the enchanted player for drawing cards by draining a player 2 life every time they draw one. That can quickly add up, and the disparity it creates in life totals makes it hard for the cursed player to find a way to kill their opponent. While 6-mana is a steep cost, the curse also comes with Madness for 3 generic and a black, which means that if you discard it, you can pay this alternate cost to cast it. Curse of Fool's Wisdom is from a commander set, so the only 60 card formats it's legal in are Legacy and Vintage. All of this curse's points have come in Legacy decks that are specifically built around curses. This is generally a mono black prison deck that uses artifact lock pieces and curses to make it as difficult as possible for your opponent to play the game. With Curse of Fool's Wisdom, a great potential win condition, especially because Legacy is a format filled with powerful card draw, including what is arguably the most format-defining card in the format, Brainstorm. While this curse hasn't gained points since 2021, the curse deck is still around in Legacy, it just hasn't put up any top 8s. It's likely Curse of Fool's Wisdom gains more points in the future, but it doesn't look likely to gain a ton of points either. At number 8, it is Cruel Reality. This 7 mana curse forces the enchanted player to sacrifice a creature or planeswalker during their upkeep, and if they can't do that, they lose 5 life. It's gained points in legacy decks that seek to cheat it and other powerful enchantments into play using Academy Rector. Getting Cruel Reality into play in the very early game is pretty insane, and a challenging thing for many decks to overcome. Cruel Reality has also been played in legacy mono black curse decks, alongside Curse of Fool's Wisdom, and it has a good shot at gaining some more points in the future. At number 7, it is Curse of Misfortunes. This 5 mana curse allows you to search your library during your upkeep for a curse that doesn't have the same name as a curse already attached to the enchanted player, and you get to put that curse on the battlefield attached to that enchanted player. Obviously, this is the centerpiece of any curse deck, since it can grant amazing card advantage that also tends to lock your opponent out of the game. This is really the card that made the mono black curse deck possible in Legacy. This curse was actually pretty unplayable for a long time, but the introduction of more expensive, powerful curses, like the aforementioned Cruel Reality, meant you could do some pretty powerful things with this curse. Like all the curses featured in that deck, it has a decent shot at gaining some more points. At number 6, it is Overwhelming Splendor. This curse has the highest mana value of any curse at 8 mana, but it delivers on that investment. It makes the enchanted player's creatures into 1-1s one with no abilities, and also shuts off the opponent's ability to activate abilities that aren't mana or loyalty abilities. Obviously, this does a good job of utterly devastating your opponent's board and their game plan. It's another curse that has gained the most points in Legacy, including in enchantment-centric decks like Enchantress, as well as more curse-heavy decks that use the Curse of Misfortunes to put it into play. Basically, no one actually pays the 8 mana for this thing, making it even more powerful. It's likely to keep gaining points. And number 5, it is Trespasser's Curse. This 2 mana curse drains 1 life every time a creature enters the battlefield under the enchanted player's control. 
That makes it a lot harder for an aggressive opponent to kill you, since when they do the thing they would normally do to kill an opponent, play a bunch of cheap creatures, they're actually making it a little bit harder for them to kill you, while also lowering their own life total. The curse sees significant play in Popper, a format where only commons are legal. It's played in Pestilence decks, which can easily deal with all opposing creatures while also damaging the opponent, and the curse makes your opponent's life total go down even more quickly, while also gaining you life so you can take more damage from Pestilence. Trespasser's Curse is likely to keep gaining points in Popper. At number 4, it is Curse of Silence, which is the newest curse to make the list. This one mana curse has you name a card name, and then the enchanted player has to spend two extra mana to cast a spell with that name. Additionally, if the player casts that spell, you can choose to sacrifice the curse and draw a card. If your opponent has a key card in their deck, or a card that is especially good against you, this is a great way to make casting that card more difficult, while also punishing them when they do finally cast it. Despite being a relatively new card, it's already seen significant play in multiple formats. In Standard, it's a sideboard card that aggro decks can bring in and name sweepers with, as slowing down a control deck sweeper by two whole turns is usually enough to win the game. It sees sideboard play in Pioneer, Modern, and Legacy, where it's also generally brought in as a way to hedge against a deck that is a bad matchup for you. It's likely to keep gaining points. At number three, it is Maddening Hex. This 3-mana curse forces the enchanted player to roll a d6 when they cast a non-creature spell, and they take damage equal to the number that they roll. After that, the hex is randomly attached to another opponent. Obviously enough, this card was mostly designed with Commander in mind. It's from one of the Forgotten Realms Commander Precons. If you're playing this in a 60-card constructed format, which generally are formats where you only have one opponent, it stays attached to that one opponent and keeps punishing them for casting non-creature spells. Even though cards from Commander sets are only legal in Legacy and Vintage, the heck has quickly caught on in both formats as a very effective way to hate on spell-heavy decks, especially Storm decks, which have to cast a whole bunch of spells in a turn and win the game that way. But the hex makes that pretty impossible. It's likely to keep gaining points and has a very real shot at eventually being the number one card on this list. At number two, it is Curse of the Pierced Heart. This two mana curse does one damage to the enchanted player during each of their upkeeps. This curse has gained all of its points in Popper in exactly the kind of deck that you would expect, Burn. The curse gives you a hard to deal with way to slowly pick away at your opponent's life total, and this effect becomes far more powerful the more direct damage you do to your opponent. It's still actively gaining points in Popper, and it's another card that could ultimately find itself at the top of the list one day. And at number one, it is Curse of Death's Hold. This five mana curse gives minus one, minus one to all the enchanted player's creatures. This significantly weakens your opponent's position on the board, and obviously it simply sweeps away all creatures with one toughness making it so your opponent can't really put them into play effectively either. It saw significant play while it was in Standard, even showing up as a main deck card in Control decks. That format had a very powerful token deck thanks to Lingering Souls, and obviously the curse is great at completely dismantling any strategy built around those tokens. More recently, it's been played in Legacy Curse decks as one of the mini curses that can be tutored up and or cheated into play. The curse is likely to keep gaining points in Legacy, and in the long run, it will be interesting to see which of these top curses ultimately end up at the top of the list, all of them are quite active, and it doesn't look like that's going to change anytime soon. So, those are the top 10 curses in Magic. If you're interested in cursing your opponent, check out the description, where you can find a direct Card Kingdom link for each card that appeared in the video. If you enjoyed this video, please like it and share it so that others can enjoy it too. If you want to make sure to catch future videos, don't forget to subscribe, and if you want to catch up on past MTG Top 10s, and there's over 560 of them at this point, you should see the playlist on your screen shortly. Thanks for watching.